Hello, Dr. Mintz here. This is a very interesting case. This is a uh, middle-aged guy of 50-something uh, and came in with severe abdominal pain. Here is the uh, acute abdominal series that was done. Take a look at it. Form an opinion about what you think it is. Also, think about how you would state this very briefly. Brief. How would you describe these findings? I would say there are multiple uh, moderately dilated small bowel loops with little or no air in colon. Looks like maybe there's a little bit here. This is stomach. No free air. Upright image here. So looks like a, a high grade small bowel obstruction. Notice how there is, this may be small bowel or it could be a little bit in colon, hard to tell sometimes, but no air in the rectal sigmoid, no air in the right colon. So pretty high grade looking bowel obstruction. Well, we went ahead and uh, did a, a CT. Okay, let's see. Here we go. This case is a bit on the unusual side, as I think you'll see in a moment. So here is the CT. And there you see the dilated small bowel. Okay, and how dilated is it? I think it's a good idea. I think most radiologists don't really do this very often, but I find it useful. Okay, three centimeters is pretty compelling evidence of, of obstruction, and here we have 3.8 centimeters. Look at the left colon. Small, small, small. So 3.8 centimeters, small bowel with a markedly narrowed, diminished caliber of the left colon. Looks like a small bowel obstruction. Okay, now this is where things get interesting. Aha! What is going on here? Now you have some dilated small bowel. Here are your friends, the mesenteric vessels. Oh, how you've gotten to know and love those little things. Notice that there is edema, some stranding. We call it stranding as a description and edema if we think that that's likely what's causing it, and very often that is. Stranding edema in the mesentery tracking along those mesenteric vessels and the bowel wall here. See how it's a little thickened? It's thickened. The same area that has this mesenteric edema has thickening of the bowel wall. Unlike here, for example, where the bowel wall is nice and thin. All right, let's see. Let's go down a little farther. Oh boy. Now you can see the extent of mucosal edema here is even a little greater and so is the amount of edema in the mesentery, around the mesenteric vessels going out to that part of small bowel. And actually here, it, well, it's at least as thick here. So you have this smoky mesentery, let's call it, this haziness in the mesentery that is exactly corresponding to the areas where bowel wall, small bowel wall is dilated. Now we've already pretty much confirmed that there's a small bowel obstruction here. What could be causing it, do you suppose? Well, we have a very small caliber right colon here, if that's right colon. That looks quite small. Now we're going down. Oh, what do we have here? What do we have here? What is that? It is a very large inguinal hernia. Looks big, huh? You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. Take a look. A bit on the large side, wouldn't you say? One of my partners said it looked like he has three extremities. 
on this cut here. So follow it down. See all the vessels there? And this is his right testicle. Doesn't look too comfortable there. And here is the left testicle, a slight asymmetry, I would say, in the uh, right versus left hemiscrotum. So, what exactly is in here? All right, well, there's mesenteric fat, and here you have the radiating mesenteric vessels going out to bowel. And let's see, we'll go down a little farther here and see if we can get any... That doesn't look like small bowel. That kind of looks like colon there. That looks like colon here, too. Uh, let's see. This looks like it's terminal ileum coming into the right colon. Can you believe that? All right. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, here's good news. Normal appendix. If you can call an appendix normal that is in the right hemiscrotum, then yes, it's relatively normal, I guess. But this is the appendix. This is the cecum. And this is quite a situation here. So this, in fact, is the terminal ileum coming into the right colon. And so right colon and a large amount of, and some small bowel, have herniated down this huge, wide, wide-necked inguinal hernia. And so here you can actually see this is small bowel coming up, and this is right colon, I believe, coming up here. And a little difficult to follow, but that looks like it's right colon. Here's a little tiny bit of transverse colon here. Bowel can be hard to follow, but let's follow it back. And that's transverse colon. And we're going down. And here it is here. And it goes down, and it goes basically dives right in here. So that, that actually is right colon there. And this, I guess, is the small bowel coming in then. OK, so that alone is very interesting. But what's happening here? Well, we already determined that there's a small bowel obstruction. What is up with the haziness in the mesentery and the thickening of the bowel wall? Well, my interpretation of this is that the mesenteric venous system, the venous drainage for portions of small bowel, specifically the portions that are here abnormal, that mesenteric venous drainage has been impaired. And it's been impaired perhaps to some extent by compression as the mesenteric vessels enter this inguinal canal, because rather than the mesenteric vessels heading superiorly converging toward the superior mesenteric vein, a lot of those vessels now are actually swinging down into this large right inguinal hernia. And so there's compression. On the one hand, there's compression of the material, including those mesenteric vessels, within the uh, hernia. And also, there's a certain element of stretching, of just pulling on the mesentery, pulling it from the uh, left upper or left mid abdomen where it belongs down into the right inguinal hernia sac. So that all produces a significant degree of impairment of venous drainage. So there's mesenteric venous partial obstruction, partial occlusion or partial obstruction, and that's causing a backup of venous pressure. The backup of venous pressure in the mesenteric veins from these portions of bowel result in two things. First, it increases the amount of fluid retention in the mucosa, and therefore the, the, the wall, the gen, not just the mucosa, but the wall of bowel there, therefore becomes edematous because fluid cannot drain from it adequate, adequately. And <clears throat> the pressure in the mesenteric venous system here is increased. So there's a backup of pressures in the actual tissue. You still have the same arterial pressure pushing arterial flow into the capillaries, but the drainage from the capillaries is much impeded by this increase in mes mesenteric venous pressure. 
And similarly, just as you have edema uh, accumulating in the bowel wall, you have edema accumulating in the mesentery, supplying that bowel. So this is the first case of this sort I've ever seen. It's uh, potentially threatening the viability of this bowel, and so I, I called it a, a surgical emergency, not of the degree of urgency, perhaps, as an arterial occlusion, but nevertheless, this bowel is at risk, and necrotic bowel is fatal. If you get necrotic bowel, basically, your likelihood of death is virtually 100%. So I haven't heard the final results from the surgery, but a, uh, I believe, fascinating case of a huge, huge hernia off the screen here, literally. Okay. And mesenteric edema. This is a nice view showing the haziness in the mesentery. And, oh, look at this. You can see the mesenteric veins. Boy, they want to head up north, and some of it does. But they're getting pulled this way, so this, I think, is superior mesenteric vein going up that way. So there's a stretching that's going on, and some of it is actually going down, pulling down in that direction, too. So, rather exceptional case of huge inguinal hernia with associated small bowel obstruction, just as any uh, hernia can produce an obstruction to the bowel, but here also producing an impediment of mesenteric venous drainage. Great case.